another season of Living Room Wisdom, where your story is your glory. I am Petrina Wisdom, author, speaker, and wealth mentor. And I'm thrilled to do a follow-up interview today <laughs> with my daughter, Jordan Al-Hashim, founder of Slay and Stilettos. So if you've been watching the series, season one, uh, we interviewed Jordan and her partner, Joshua, and at the time, she had a little extra. She was pregnant <laughs> and moving into a completely new phase of her life. So before we go into this transition, what I want to first talk about is Slay and Stilettos, because I don't think we got an opportunity to really shine the light on Slay in Stilettos yes. that, that I really want people to you know, understand and feel about your brand. Okay. So share with the audience a little bit about yourself and your journey, but also how that plays into or how that inspired Slay and Stilettos. Okay, so it is a very long story, but um, in a nutshell, basically Slay and Stilettos was born through my dark night of the soul moment when losing my fathers. Mm -hmm. So um, like I said, it's a long story, but I was 13 when my stepfather actually committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And through that, I actually discovered that my biological father was alive and wanted to connect with me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we sat down at the park when yeah. it was 2009 and my mom sat me down and she said, you know, there's something I need to tell you. Mm -hmm. Your, um, our stepfather, the one that passed away, he's actually not your, your biological father. Your biological father lives in Ireland and he's been wanting to reach out and communicate with you. Are you open to it? It was overwhelming <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, but we d developed our relationship. And so over about 13 years, as I was going through my schooling, um, we had a long distance relationship, my biological father and myself. And we were doing Skype, you know, video calls, and which was great. And we got to develop a, a little bit of a relationship with each other. And within a container of safety for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was a container of safety. And it was almost at a distance still. Yes. Like, yes, we're, we're meeting and he'd pop over and I'd go to Ireland for a summer, right? Because yeah. it was still school time. We took our trip together uh, to Greece. Yes. And, yeah, so we yeah. would meet in different places. We would meet in different places. And it was almost like he was Disney dad, in a sense. Yeah. Because of it <laughs> um, but you know throughout the years that's kind of how we developed our relationship and once I graduated college he invited me to stay with him for a month's time. Mm -hmm. So I said yes. Uh, it, it came with a little bit of fear because that was the first time an opportunity where I got to spend so much time with him. And we had been butt cheeks for your entire life. Like literally you go where you go, I go. And exactly. we were always together. Yeah. So that was huge for both of us. It was very <laughs> huge. And after the month time with spending with time with him, it was very healing actually. Because mm -hmm. um, it was the first time we got to spend, spend time with each other. I learned about my history of my family on his side and we just had a really great relationship um, that we were able to establish while I was there for the month so I actually asked him at that point if I could stay I made a decision to move to Ireland yeah. so we dropped everything I came back home to the States packed up and then decided to go move there and three days later my biological father ended up passing away from a heart attack so I'm alone in another country, um, and I'm his only next of kin. I was his only child. He never remarried. So I was also handling his affairs um, and closing everything out. So without my family, I didn't have my mom. I didn't have yeah. my, my support system. Yeah. So it was devastating, to say the least. It was, um, I was 22 years old at the time, and just handling everything alone, as, and as well as his fiance. And right. she was going through grief because she was the only one that was with him as well. So it's almost like at 22, I'm supporting his fiance, who I don't know that well. Yeah. <laughs> but we're in the same household together, and then his friends and his family are, are, are coming. And um, I didn't know them. It was like right. being, imagine, you know, dealing with the grief of your father and having just a bunch of strangers around you. Thankfully, my mom did come um, and she was my savior, always is. If you've been watching the podcast, you know how amazing of a woman that, that my Katrina is. Um, so she came to, to my rescue, essentially. But Slay and Stilettos was born because during that time when I was alone, the only thing that I knew to do was to cling to what I love. 
And for me, it's movement. It always has been. Um, through college, I kind of lost it just because you're so wrapped up in schooling and your education. And boys. Right? Boys. <laughs> and, and working. So it was, it was always on the back burner, but it was the first opportunity for me to move again and move through the grief. So that's really where Slay and Stilettos was born. I would watch on YouTube like Aaliyah Janelle and uh, Nicole Kirkland, some of these really amazing choreographers. Yeah. I'd learn their choreography and it almost was like stepping into my womanhood too. Like um, oh, my initiation. 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 <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yes, my initiation. So that's really where Slay and Stilettos was born from. Even yes. though it, it, it came from tragedy, yeah. I really am inspired to help women mm -hmm. uh, move through grief or move through trauma or move through even just self-doubt and self-worth issues. Like moving the body really helps to manifest and create the life that you want. Yeah, and I remember from the perspective of a, of a mother, all the way across the country and yeah. just this feeling of helplessness and at the same time recognizing that this was your journey, this was your path to walk and grow through mm -hmm. so that you could, you know, own yourself and stand fully in your power and, you know, become this amazing woman that you already were, but amplified, uh, amplified version of that. Right. And I remember when you first started like taking the photo shoots and this is a little girl that was like super shy, yeah. super self-conscious, like, you know, um, what's the word? It's so far from my vocabulary, I can't even remember it. Uh, uh, when you don't want to show yourself when you're um, hidden or what concealed. Do you call it? Or What's that word that I'm looking for where I'm uh, dem demure? Oh. Once you have a baby, it just flies out the window. It's like, ah! Yes. Right? <laughs> anyway, I can't think of the word right now, but uh, yeah, that was going from that to you starting to take these beautiful, sexy photos yeah. that were not overtly sexual, but just like this really confident woman who's owning herself, right? Wow. And watching that whole process. That actually makes me think of, yes, when, during the time of the grassroots of Slay and Stilettos, I literally had just my MacBook. Yep. I'd open it up. I'm in my dad's house, right? right? He's not there. Yeah. Clearly he's not there. But I had my, I'm in my dad's house and I'm literally just taking these little racy photos in my body suits and just, just learning yes. myself, really. You know, yeah. that was the only way I knew how to express. And then you took steps and you did your first workshop, I your first Slate and Stilettos workshop in Ireland, in Ireland yeah. where she didn't know anybody when she went to Ireland, didn't but she anyone. somehow created and connected with a community, which is so important. As we know, yes. I talk about it all the time. Um, and, and just the way that you blossomed from that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about that process and then let's fast forward and talk about what Slay and Stilettos has evolved to now. Okay. So yes, um, that was my first class, was in Dublin. Shout out to the ladies that came to my first class if you're watching, because it was really significant to me um, to go, to, at that point I had actually moved back to the States. And then I came to visit. That's right. I came to visit and I hosted a class. And there was like 10 ladies that showed up and it was amazing, because um, I had taken a couple classes with them before. And um, they came for my class for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just so healing. And so that's where it started and I began kind of doing um, different classes through when I came back to the States and uh, leading up to the pandemic. So that brings us up to 2020. <laughs> um, that's when I was really do, starting to do the classes mm -hmm. and starting to make an impact in my community um, with strictly dance mm -hmm. and it was strictly movement. And what I wanted to create was an environment where women can also see their progress. Mm -hmm. Cause I had regular students that were coming and what was different about my classes is I would have a film team every time and um, you would be able it's to see your experience. progress. It was an experience. and, and you know, watching yourself be shy in the, in the beginning and not want to express so much. But then after a few classes and coming back and saying yes to yourself, um, then you're really starting to blossom and then you start hitting the movements a little bit stronger. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the progress. And mm -hmm. that was something that uh, from through testimonials, yes. I realized was my gift mm -hmm. is see themselves blossom and, and me being able to facilitate that transformation. Mm -hmm. um, up until today, because obviously the pandemic, we had a hard stop, couldn't yeah. meet in person. And I also got pregnant in the midst of that and moved to Georgia in the midst of that from California. Yeah. So um, lots of change. Yeah. But where, where Slay and Stilettos is today is that mostly virtual. Um, yes, I want the in-person component. Mm -hmm. However, I st still want to facilitate change with women on a virtual platform. 
And then fast forwarding to today, uh, what I want to do is, is also facilitate women on the financial side. Mm -hmm. So helping them reclaim their wealth and really step into it because traditionally and historically, we've put all of our financial health and our financial information to a man, right? Like first our fathers, then we get married, then our husbands, right. and we never actually know what's going on. So for me, on the investment side, as well as um, protecting yourself and making sure your wealth can outlast mm -hmm. and also historically we outlive our husbands so that yes. <laughs> statistically <laughs> yes. statistically 100%. yeah um, we outlive our husbands or our, our man or whatever mm -hmm. so you're then stuck with the financial burden and not knowing how to go and not knowing how to navigate that so mm -hmm. for me it's a passion specifically with younger women as well just because we have time yes. <laughs> we have time to build wealth and, and you can really change your financial situation if you choose to look at it so mm -hmm. for me that's slay your financial Finances is yes. the new um, branching off as well as Slay and Stilettos. And really, it's all encompassing for women to reclaim and own and feel empowered with who they are. Yeah, and I'm so proud of you because for me, watching her grow up, you went from, like I said, the shy little girl who I was like, I saw dancer in you from day one. So it's like ballet, tap, gymnastics, put her in all the things. Yeah. And she would go in, she would master it, karate too, go in and master it, and then she was bored and she would move <laughs> on, right? For whatever reason. Yeah. And so there is that piece. And then also as a child, you remember sitting at the table, because I didn't grow up with financial education, yeah. we made sure that we would have her at the table, like learning how money works and compound interest and like all of these concepts yeah. that we didn't learn as children mm -hmm. but again it's like okay been there done that know that move on right and kind of shy away from all of the things that we had already seen in you right so for that to come now full circle you've embraced the dance and picked that right back up people yeah. think that she's been like classically trained <laughs> just because she has such natural ab abilities yeah. and then also to include the finances into that I mean we've always work together on the mental spiritual emotional realms in business she's always been my number one partner and cheerleader <laughs> but um, to see you actually owning it for yourself is such a gift and there are so many Millennials and all generations yeah. really that are yeah. going to be inspired by the work that you're doing in the world so much so that I invited her to join me as a facilitator in Belize at my pure abundance retreat so for the past four years she's been facilitating facilitating a Slay and Stilettos workshop that is always a hit. Always. Yes. All the women are talking about it. Um, at the point in which she does her workshop at the retreat, we've already done like deep transformational work and recreation work. And it seems like your workshop solidifies that change. Mm -hmm. It really helps them fully step into the truth of who they are and yes, embody all of themselves. Oh, yeah. So speak to me a little bit about that experience yes. and from the first year to now and how that shaped your confidence, but also your work. Yes. So first of all, Belize, I always look forward to it every year in October because the ladies that my mother attracts um, are amazing. And I love to be able to, for me, it's a challenge almost because yes. I, I typically choreograph for people that are dancers, right? So some of the some of the people and, and women that are coming to Belize have not had a dance background. Right. They don't have movement. They may have, you know, physical ailments or physical challenges that mm -hmm. I have to kind of work through. So mm -hmm. I make choreography that is adaptable. It's, it's very easy, right? But really it's about embodying and yes. really it's about coming out of your shell and implementing the work that we're doing. So I try to think about, I ask her, I said, what's the theme for this year? Yeah. Okay, I take that and I choreograph something. Mm -hmm. Then I bring it to Belize and the women, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. they at first are very shy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Very shy, except for my two-star students. Well, you know, me and Stephanie, we're always headed to class. Of course, of course. Um, but very shy in the beginning. And then once we do across the floors, and yes. once we do um, certain things to just break out of our shell and move, yes. all of a sudden the ponytails come out and we're feeling the liberated. The shirts come off shirts and the pants come off. 
off and you, never you know. have a gift. Thank you. You have a gift to help people it. feel comfortable yes. to, and the way that you ease them in through, throughout the process, uh, it's almost as they're like they're graduating mm -hmm. um, throughout the, the choreography. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I love that. I love that. It's always like my proudest moment at the retreat, right? Yes. Um, and now I want to pivot and talk about motherhood <laughs> because my baby had a baby. Five weeks ago. Yes. Five weeks old. My yes. very first grandchild. It's been a, a just a mind-blowing experience. And I know there's also been some challenges. So you've had enough challenge in your in your life that you've <laughs> overcome and danced your way through. Mm -hmm. Talk about the motherhood challenge and how that's, you know, affecting you mm -hmm. and, and how you believe it's going to maybe motivate, inspire, or, or um, you know, whatever the word is that I'm looking for, but basically how that's going to affect your work moving forward. Okay. So motherhood is something <laughs> from the pregnancy to labor and delivery to postpartum and then trying to navigate your way back into your real life. So for me, um, I'm going to start with my labor and delivery because you saw me all pregnant, <laughs> yeah. which I spoke to a little bit with on that journey. Um, but I had a 13 hour labor at home, non-medicated, and I chose to do that. It was a beautiful experience. Um, and down to the point where we had an emergency, I needed to pivot. We um, ended up in the hospital and I had my baby in the emergency room. <laughs> yes. So there are no births usually in the emergency room, right. um, but Jewel wanted to come out and she wanted to be seen and witnessed as she came She had out. to make a grand entrance she had like to her mother. A grand entrance. And, um, <laughs> Even even the actual labor yes. experience is really something, um, and, it, and I feel like that is another initiation. You're oh, yeah. literally battling to bring your child into the world, mm -hmm. um, so that began the journey. And since then, it's just been a fight, you know, um, transitioning and, and f learning their sleep schedules and, and adapting to that. Literally, your whole life becoming about this child. Um, so for, for me being, you know, 20, how old am I? 26, I just yes. turned 26. Um, this is new. And for, for women, no matter what age you become a mother, sure. it is new. And you just have grace with yourself because mm -hmm. that's, I can definitely say, ooh, this is exactly what I wanna speak to actually. I used to be a perfectionist, I still am. And there's no perfection in no. motherhood mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. It is so many and um, it, it, this is very pertinent for me right now and very like yeah. on point. It's right? what's up. It is what's up. It's yeah. right at the surface. Yeah. Your relationship will be tested. You see Joshua is not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. He's he just here. not here. <laughs> he is here. Um, no, your relationship gets tested and you, 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 everything is just at the surface. Yeah. And it feels like you cannot handle it. However, there's something that pulls out of you and, um, you just look at your baby and it's like, mm -hmm. I gotta continue on. So for me, with the pivot in Slay and Stilettos, that's a big, big part of the yeah. reason. I want to be able to create where I'm able to be there physically for my daughter mm -hmm. and um, also show her an example of success mm -hmm. and that women can be successful and have their own business. So what's so funny is that I previously and why I kind of dibbled and dabbled in, in entrepreneurship in the beginning was I was afraid to, um, leave the security of a job yeah and that was something I, i've uh, expressed struggled to you. with on and off for years yeah. yeah and there's so many people out out in the world that are struggling with that saying i want to be an entrepreneur of course everyone wants to be their own boss mm -hmm. but you really battle with deciding whether or not um you can sacrifice security Presumed. of a job right presumed, presumed security, security yeah. of a job and so um for me this whole coming to motherhood it's mm -hmm. solidified for me that i'm going to be an entrepreneur this is with the path i'm going on and um and wanting and going to be successful in as yes. well right because you just have to burn bridges and um so I hope this is coming out um, 100% eloquently because it feels a little bit scattered in my brain right it, now. That's, but. that's the real life. <laughs> Welcome. <Yes. laughs> 
Yes, <laughs> it's real life. There's a perfectionism out the window, right? You saw it come up again. Yeah, um, and it's something that'll always come up. Yeah. And, and every time that it does come up, anytime we break through anything, we have these opportunities mm -hmm. to be confronted with that again. And it's an invitation to decide, are you going to default back to your old patterns or are you going to do things in a different way? So congratulations, you're doing things in a different way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if there is a young or middle-aged or elder mm -hmm. woman out there who has a dancer within her, mm. right? She has a dancer within her. Maybe she doesn't move at all mm -hmm. right now, right? What would you say to that woman? What is a way that they can just get started moving their body, starting to really get back into their bodies, out of their heads, back in their bodies, um, that is gonna not only affect their, their physical health, but also their mental and their self-image? Okay, so to that woman, what I would say is, that you need to first and foremost know that you are a dancer. Mm -hmm. All women are dancers, hey. in my opinion. Um, so really just channeling into that and saying, yes, I'm a dancer. And oftentimes when we're younger, there is other people that influence mm -hmm. your perspective and, and your, your creative flow. So know that you're a dancer for one. And then for two, just begin doing some mirror work. So what I teach in some of my courses is mirror work. So you sit in front of the mirror and you literally stare at yourself. I would also encourage you to dim the lights if you can. Look at yourself in the mirror and just begin to touch yourself. Just begin to touch yourself in the places, especially in the places that you're a little insecure about. Really touch into that and just do little subtle movements. Um, and what that's gonna do, put on some music. What it's gonna do is take you out of your head and bring you into your body. I also do this um, scanning process where I go from the head and I have my eyes closed. I go from the head and I start with the head and move my head around and then move my shoulders and then move my chest and down, 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 down to the bottoms of your feet. And that is gonna be another process to get you into your body. But just making sure it's a slow process. You have some slow music on or, or any kind of music that really gets you into that mode. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a way for you to begin the process of loving yourself and tuning back into your inner dancer. Awesome, so dance is... Dance is, oh gosh. <laughs> Dance is love. To me, dance is self-love. Dance is experiencing and expressing all of who you are from the inside out. So whether that's shy and demure or whether that's powerful and loud, that's what dance is. And it's a universal language. Motherhood is? Motherhood is a test. <laughs> Motherhood is the ultimate test. Motherhood is a journey. I'm just beginning it. Um, and I know there's going to be more to come, but motherhood is beautiful. Okay. Motherhood is beautiful. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> That's amazing. And again, I always love having you here because we can just talk all day long about all sorts of things. Yes. But in the interest of this segment and making sure that our listeners get everything that they came here for, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a close. So is there any last thoughts? Well, for one thing, I'd love for you to share where people can find you uh, if they're interested in learning more about Slay and Stilettos. So you can find me on Instagram at Slay Stilettos or slayinstilettos.com. Fantastic. Well, thank you, my honey. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Um, and thank you for tuning in today to our Living Room Wisdom episode. Uh, go ahead and join our Badass Bodacious Entrepreneurs group on Facebook. Jordan's in there. I'm in there. Lots of other badass entrepreneurs. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. This, this interview, if you want to see this gorgeous woman besides me, uh, is airing on YouTube as well. Subscribe to our Apple, uh, Spotify, and Anchor podcast channels, and we upload videos every week. So stay tuned, be inspired, and we'll see you next week on Living Room Wisdom, where your story is your glory. I am Patrina Wisdom. Namaste and bye-bye.